Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, do you still have a GeForce GTX 960 graphics card? And have you been holding out for a worthwhile upgrade for something that costs around the same $200-ish you spent all those years ago? Well, if so, then this video will be of interest, which is probably why you clicked on it. Hmm. Anyway, why am I comparing this now four-year-old graphics card with much newer graphics cards, such as the GTX 1660. I've got the MSI Gaming X model here. I also have the Gaming X and Gaming Z versions of the 1660 Ti and RTX 2060. And we've got about 10 other graphics cards as well. But why am I comparing this old banger to these new graphics cards? And the reason is it's, well, it's a throwback video and we haven't, well, we've never actually done a throwback video for the GTX 960. So it's not a Although this is the 2019 version, there wasn't a 2018, a 2017, or a 2016 version of this four-year-old graphics card. So for some reason, it's just flown under the radar and we haven't really given it a dedicated video. So that's all gonna change now. Part of the reason why I've decided to focus on the GTX 960 is because of some claims made by Nvidia. In the review guide, they said that the new GTX 1660 was a whopping 113% faster than the GTX 960, and that makes it the perfect upgrade option for those with this mid-range Maxwell GPU still in their rig, spitting out whatever frames it can in modern games. And since the GTX 960 is the fifth most popular GPU amongst Steam users, it seems there are still plenty of you still using it. Before we get to the benchmarks though, here are just a few quick stats about the GeForce GTX 960. It packs just 1,024 CUDA cores, that's 27% less than the 1660, and they're clocked 34% lower. There's also 33% fewer ROPs, and while both make use of GDDR5 memory, the 960 has 42% less memory bandwidth due to the fact that in part it uses lower clocked memory, but more crucially, a narrower 120-bit wide memory bus. Okay, enough about stats, let's talk about the testing. For this one, I'll be looking closely at performance at 1080p in a dozen titles, and then we'll jump to the typical 33 game breakdown, comparing the 1660 and 960 head to head. And finally, a few quick notes on the test system. Here we've used the Core i9 1900 k clocked at five gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory. As for the drivers, we used Adrenaline 2019 edition 19.2.3 for the Radeon GPUs, and Game Ready 419.35. WHQL for the GeForce GPUs. Okay, let's get into the results. Playing Apex Legends at 1080p with the high quality preset isn't that much fun with a GTX 960. You're looking at frame rates that are consistently well below 60 FPS. So far from ideal when playing a fast paced first person shooter. For those of you not wanting to reduce the visual quality settings, we'll have to upgrade, and something like the new GTX 1660 offers a healthy 136% performance boost with 106 FPS on average. Moving on to the recently released, The Division 2, and we find a pretty dire situation with the GTX 960, just 27 FPS on average. Basically, the game's unplayable using the ultra quality preset at 1080p. Admittedly though, the game is quite demanding with these high quality settings. So those of you looking to upgrade to a GTX 1660 can look forward to a pretty mega 152% performance boost. Not too bad that. Though I should note if you're only looking at playing the Division 2, then something like an RX 590 might be a better choice. And I believe right now you do get a free copy of the Division 2 with Radeon GPU purchases. Or maybe that's just the Ryzen CPUs. Don't know, you'll have to look into that one. Moving on, we find a similar situation when testing with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Using the highest quality preset, the old GeForce GPU spat out just 34 FPS on average, and with frame dips into the 20s, it was uh, pretty horrible under these conditions, I think it's fair to say. Meanwhile, the 124% performance bump offered by the GTX 1660 meant the game could now be enjoyed in all of its glory at 1080p. Has to be said, the GTX 960 does a decent job in Forza Horizon 4, though this decent performance can be mostly attributed to how well optimized Forza Horizon 4 is. Still, you will have to use the 4GB model if you want to see the kind of performance that we're showing here. And even then, the GTX 1660 still offered a 126% performance boost, hitting 95 FPS on average, and with over twice as many frames pumped out each second, it did offer a significantly smoother gaming experience. 
Hitman 2 was also playable with the GeForce GTX 960 and it really wouldn't take too much to dial back the quality things to achieve that glorious 60 FPS. That said, if you want to enjoy Hitman with the ultra quality settings enabled, then something like a GTX 1660 is the way to go as it spat out a much more impressive 93 FPS on average. Testing with Just Cause 4 saw the new budget Turing GPU deliver just over twice as many frames when compared to the GTX 960. The jump up from 32 FPS to 65 FPS really is very massive and it makes leaping and flying around while you attack enemies much easier and perhaps more importantly, much more enjoyable. I think it's fair to say we're starting to see a pretty consistent trend here. Testing with Resident Evil 2 saw the GTX 1660 providing 100 and 29% more performance at 1080p with the maximum quality preset enabled. This more than doubling of the frame rate obviously led to significant improvements in gameplay, and while this isn't a game that necessarily needs big frame rates, the smoother motion certainly adds to the experience. Of all the games we've benchmarked so far, Fortnite is by far the least demanding. As such, the GTX 960 was good for 52 FPS on average, and we are also using the Epic Quality preset, which is the highest quality preset available in the game. So with competitive settings, which most Fortnite players like to use, the 960 would be pushing over 60 FPS at 1080p. However, if you want 144 FPS, or perhaps even more FPSs, with competitive settings, the GTX 1660 will be required, and even with the Epic preset enabled, it's still averaged 113 FPS. Metro Exodus is a new and very demanding title. The GTX 1660, for example, can't quite average 60 FPS at 1080p with the ultra quality preset enabled. That said, it is a darn sight better than the 27 FPS on average you'd be getting with the aging GTX 960. So there is that. I must admit, I expected the GTX 960 to do quite well in Rainbow Six Siege. And while 48 FPS on average is playable, I was actually expecting it to be a little better than that. Though, come to think of it, I'm not exactly sure why, given that the RX 570 does only render 69 FPS on average in our test. This means the upgrade to the GTX 1660 would net you a healthy 146% performance bump, hitting 118 FPS on average. Now, this is an interesting result, as it's one of the smallest margins that we found for the 1660 over the 960 across the 33 games tested. Here the Turing GPU was just 81% faster. Yes, just 81% faster. Obviously that's still a really big margin, but given we've typically seen more than double the performance out of the 1660, this one is a bit of a surprise. Especially given that Battlefield 5 is a very modern, very demanding first person shooter. But anyway, 81% it is. Although World of Tanks has recently received a major overhaul and we are testing with the HD client, it's still very well optimized for older hardware. For example, the GTX 960 was still good for 55 FPS on average, and that's very playable performance for this title. Still, if you seek more performance, then the GTX 1660 can help you out with a nice 91% performance bump. The last game we're going to look closely at is Far Cry New Dawn, and here the GTX 960 also had enough grunt for playable performance at 1080p using the ultra quality preset, so that's pretty impressive. And it really speaks to how well optimized this title is. Still, if you want to keep frame rates well above 60 FPS at all times, then the 98% performance boost you'll get from the GTX 1660 will be very welcomed. Now, when it comes to power consumption, we see just how impressive the Turing-based GTX 1660 really is in terms of efficiency. Despite often offering twice as much performance as the GTX 960, it pushed total system consumption usage just 16% higher, hitting 262 watts. Still, it has to be said, even by today's standards, the GTX 960, it isn't terrible and you'll get away with a very modest power supply. Okay, so we've seen how the GTX 960 performs in modern titles at 1080p using dialed up quality settings, and it's not great, but it's also what you'd expect from a four-year-old uh, budget mid-range graphics card. I don't know if you'd call it low-end or mid-range. Let's just go with budget mid-range. Seems to sort of cover us on both fronts there. Anyway, the GTX 960, it went on sale way back in 2015 for $200 US. So that was the MSRP for that particular model. 
Uh, though that was for the two gigabyte version, uh, the four gigabyte version that I tested, that was around, I think, 40 to $50 more. It's hard to say exactly because I don't recall the exact prices back then, but from memory, it was about 40 to $50 more. And back then, that kind of price premium certainly wasn't worth it. Today, though, the two gigabyte model will lag behind quite a bit. And chances are you probably have the two gigabyte model. I don't think there was that many four gigabyte cards sold. They really only made sense quite late in the game when it probably didn't make sense to buy a GTX 960. But anyway, if you do have a two gigabyte model, then the performance uplift will be even greater. So it makes even more sense to upgrade to something like the GTX 1660. As you might have expected, based on the 13 games that we just looked at closely, the GTX 1660 is for the most part more than twice as fast as the GTX 960. On average at 1080p, we're looking at a 117% performance boost, so that's obviously pretty massive, and it means Nvidia were right on the money when they claimed a 113% performance boost. That amounts to an almost 30% performance uplift per year, so it is hard to argue that that's not a good deal. Granted, the GTX 1660 does cost $20 to $30 more than what the 960 cost upon release, or at the MSRP, and that 10 to 15% price increase isn't ideal, I suppose, but it's not exactly unreasonable either, given that the Radeon RX 588GB costs $190 US right now, placing it roughly on par with the GTX 1660 in terms of cost per frame. This does mean that GTX 960 owners have had a similar value option in the RX 580 for quite some time now, and I guess that does make the GTX 1660 a little less exciting, though to be fair, the 1660 is a faster product than the RX 580, so it is still quite exciting. Oh, and because no one will mention this in the comment section below, the Radeon RX 580 comes with two free games. Apparently, I am contractually obligated to mention the free games bundle every time I discuss a Radeon GPU. Must be somewhere in the fine print. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. There's quite clearly a number of very solid upgrade options for those of you still using a rusty old GTX 960. So if you want something like the 1660, 1660 Ti, or maybe even a Radeon RX 580, if you can grab one of them on sale, then... Yeah, plenty of options there that will offer you quite a lot more performance. Hope you guys enjoyed the benchmarks, and remember you can jump over to our Patreon page for all 33 graphs if you want to take a closer look at any of the games that we did or didn't discuss in this video. Thank you for watching, I'm your host Steve, and I'll see you again next time.